to the service today. We're counting a great joy to have you here with us. Uh, it's a homecoming Sunday, and some of you are visiting with family and friends. We appreciate you being here today. Uh, a lot of folks out sick. Be praying for those. Uh, pray for uh, Brother Lee as he brings the message a little bit later. Now, he's not like me. When he smells food, he goes fast. <laughs> so hopefully, no, I don't know how long he preaches. I'm just uh, But we sure are glad that you're here. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, remembering all the, the special requests that we mentioned and those other needs that you may know of. Lord, as we enter into your presence today, we are so thankful, thankful that we have a God who cares about us, a God who has allowed us through Jesus Christ to bring our cares, our concerns, our wishes, our worries, our doubts, our fears, and be able to share them with you, that you can be the help that we need in our time of need. God, we do pray especially for our church family. Uh, several of them have, have uh, had COVID over the last several weeks, and some have it now. Uh, we just pray for them and trust that they, their recovery will be as quick and complete as possible. Uh, for those that may be traveling, we just pray for them. For those that's doing other things in the building today, we just pray for them as well. We lift up the service to you. God, we want it to be encouraging to the people, but most of all, we want it to be acceptable in your ears. May the worship that comes out of our lips be from a heart that's been on worshiping and serving you. God, when all said and done, that's what it's all about. And I just pray, God, it will be an acceptable worship time today. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Let's stand together and sing this hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness. sing a cappella of that chorus one more time. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. Let's sing this song now, The Goodness of God. Yeah. 
reminded in James 1 6 you know when you ask God for something you can't doubt God and, and I, I, I do that I'm a doubter I, I can doubt but but it says in his word that you can't do that and that's what this song is about um, is having the faith and believing you know we um, you think about homecoming and you think <clears throat> about um, all the things past we've got a lot coming with our future and we've got to have the faith and we can't doubt that God is going to be faithful to us. They say this mountain can't be 
say these chains will never break But they don't know you like we do There is power in your name We've heard that there is no way Sleep is gone, my heart is full of sorrow. Believe the dust and let you down. I dread the pain that waits for me tomorrow. When the sun reveals my broken dreams scattered.
be lived the God of earth and glory Would he even take the time to care for me But you know I read it in the Bible That a story has blood provided for your forgiveness while he was dying on the
pray, Lord God, for open hearts and minds to receive your word today. I pray for that one who is to bring that message before us this day. May your will be done in all that takes place, and we'll give you all honor, glory, and praise. Lord, now as we're given an opportunity to give back just a portion of your many blessings, I lift up to you this offering today. May it be used in a mighty way to tell others of the love of Jesus Christ. We ask these things, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. message for today, just before Daryl sings. Uh, they, they told me before church, today's their anniversary. I look at Penny. I look at Penny, it looks like you've been married 25 years. I look at Lee, it looks like 75 years. <laughs> I really don't know how long they've been married. Baby. But just listen and let God speak to your heart today as he presents the message a little bit later. Pray for Daryl, he's getting over the consumption. As he sings today, I'm sure it'll be a blessing as well. Amen. When you're getting over consumption and you're 82 years old, that's two points against you. <laughs> I'm going to sing a song this morning that was written by Jay Kiss. Uh, he originally wrote it. Let me put it that way. I'm going to use part of his song, and then I rewrote it because I didn't like what he wrote. <laughs> Not really. I, I'm, I'm kidding. But he wrote it for his own purposes, for his own life. And I felt like that I needed to write it for my own life. Uh, the title of it is Sunday Morning Meeting Time. Now, I like to call it my homecoming song. And it just reminds me, of, if you'll excuse me in the expression I'm going to use, in Zion Memorial Methodist Church. Well, I didn't get a big response out of that as I thought of. <laughs> but that's my old home church. And when I heard this song that Jake had read, written, 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 I, he had written this song, uh, I thought, you know, that just sounds like back at my old home church. And I remember so well. Listen to the song as we sing it. Sunday morning meeting time. Sunday. 
Sunday meeting time Back home where I was born Was a happy time Every Sunday morning oh, I remember well The songs we used to sing How we'd make those rafters ring It was there I learned to pray When I was just a kid Now I'm far away I'm so glad I did Someday I'm going back To hear those church bells fly That Sunday morning meeting time If the journey of my life were a country road The most important landmark would be the places of worship The old home church heated with a cold snow furnace Was where I first heard of a land called Beulah It was there I heard the old saints of God testify to the faithfulness of God. And it was there I had my first date and would gather with the youth around the campfire and sing Kumbaya, remember that? In another church I promised my sweetheart I'd be faithful to her until death do we part. And in that same church we dedicated our first baby to the Lord. And back at the old home church where we first said goodbye to my mom a little later my dad. And with the presence of God and prayers of friends we knew we'd never be alone. So this Sunday, when the church bells ring, there will be a chorus of bells in my heart, thankful to be in church at meeting time. It was there I learned to pray when I was just a kid. Now I'm far away. I'm so glad I did Someday I'm going back To hear those church bells chime At Sunday morning meeting time Thank you, Jesus. I had a privilege to be here today. I, Brother Roger asked me and I had to step back and think. Surely he wasn't talking to me. But you know, God has a way of doing things that I don't really understand. I had a young preacher that was called out of my church down in Albemarle. He called me this morning and he said, I wanted to tell you what happened. And he said, I was coming out from uh, Locust, North Carolina and I took the wrong road. I thought it was the wrong road. He said, I got going down through there and there's a head-on collision. Then there's a woman, a woman there in the car that he run up to and the windshield had got knocked out and it down under her chin, had cut her throat. But she was able to, that's amazing, she was able to talk, that she was even alive. But he ran up to her and he talked to her and she said, don't leave me, don't leave me. He said, I'm not going anywhere. He said, do you know the Lord is your Savior? She said, no, tell me how. So he said he led her to the Lord. And when they took the fork, forks of life and they started opening up that car, she died. And I thought, you was on the right road. You took the right turn. God never, we never know where the Lord is leading us. This morning as we come today, he said, uh, he checked my tie to see how long I was going to be preaching. I said, I should have cut it up to about here. But uh, 
I got to thinking about the scriptures and I was reading this in one day and it jumped out. And it said something that I think we all need to hear and hopefully we'll let it sink into our hearts. It's found in the book of Luke in chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. Now Vicki, you know when you retire they're going to be going to be churches fighting over you for a piano player. <laughs> a lot of churches need piano players. And uh, maybe we get Julie, she could play and sing too, could yeah. God's good. Amen. The book of Luke, chapter 7, I want to begin reading. In verse 36, so if you will, if you can, stand with me for the reading of God's word, please. <coughs> and one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with the tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed five hundred pence, the other fifty. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore which of them will love him most. And Simon answered and said, I suppose that he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, I thought it interesting, he turned to the woman, but he was talking to Simon. You know, a lot of times that's the way it works. My wife does that. She turns to somebody else, but she's talking to me. I can tell by the way it comes out. But he turned to the woman and said to Simon, See thou this woman, I entered into thine house, thou gavest me no water for my feet, but she has washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou, said, thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they that sat at meat with him began to say within themselves, Who is this? that forgiveth sins also. And he said unto the woman, Thy faith hath saved thee. Go in peace. Let us pray. Father, we come before the throne of grace today with Now, the only way you're going to really gra grasp this message today is to picture in your heart. I've got one of these things to turn on. Something. 
is to picture in your heart what's taking place. We found here that uh, the Pharisees desired him, that he, one of the Pharisees desired him, he would eat with him. Now, some say this Pharisee, or this Pharisee was Simon the leper who had been cleansed and he had invited Jesus into his house. Now, I don't know about all of that, but I do know that Jesus, the Bible says that he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. You know, according to the harmony of the Gospels, anyone who's ever read that, you'll find that uh, this incident right here happened right after Jesus extended the invitation and, and said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, if that's the case, that it makes a lot more sense as we continue to look in the scriptures. But following that scripture there, come and give you rest. In that case, a woman heard the invitation. She accepted the promise, and she received the rest. And she came as all of us should have come today. You know, today's homecoming. Did you come home uh, to Baden Baptist Church, or did you come home to Jesus? Well, that's what we want you to do today is come home to Jesus. I want you to come to him and receive him. As this woman here came before him and said, Thank you, Jesus. Where would we be had it not been for the Lord? Where would we be today? I guarantee I wouldn't be standing here if I were even alive. But God did great things, and I thank him for it. I just want to say thank you, Jesus. This morning, And I want us to look at these scriptures here and see how uh, that applies to what we have to say. First of all, we see here the appearance of a woman. Now, Jesus has gone uh, into the Pharisee's house and to eat uh, with him. Now, in those days, they didn't pull up a chair and sit down at the table to eat. They leaned on a table. They leaned on a table, uh, leaning over just their legs. It's just sort of picture yourself relaxing. And had his legs sort of curled up behind him, and he was laying there, and all of a sudden a woman came up behind him. He wasn't expecting her, but she showed up. And the Bible says here, a, a woman in the city which was a sinner. She was a sinner. Who else needs to come to Jesus but a sinner? Now, after we're saved by God's grace, that don't leave us out. We still need to come to Jesus. Because we still sin each day. We still make mistakes along the way. But it says here she was a sinner. And when Jesus, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster box of ointment. So I want us to first of all notice who she was. Who she was. The Bible says she was a sinner. She was a sinner. We don't know what sin, what she did to inherit this title of a sinner. I don't know what she did. We've got all kinds of ideas of what's going on. It says she was a woman of the city. Now she could have been a woman of the street. She could have been a, a street walker, whatever it was. Uh, just picturing your mind, she, her hearing the words of Jesus, come unto me. No doubt she'd been looking for a long time. She was wanting some rest. The reason she took up her occupation, she wasn't happy where she was. And she's looking for something to answer her questions. And she heard Jesus say, come unto me, and I'll give you rest. And she took that in her heart, and she just let it ring. You, never, you ever heard the word of God when it really speaks to you, and it gets, it gets in your heart and your mind, and it just seems to echo over and over and over. That's what happened to this lady. And she heard Jesus say, come unto me. Now remember the Bible says she was a sinner. Now I want to focus on this one word here for a moment. It says here that she was a sinner. Now that, we don't lose the title of of sinner, but what we do, we lose what we used to do, what we used to be. We're not what we used to be, but thank God we're not what we're going to be. 
And so here the Bible says she was a sinner. Something has changed in her life. And so then we see why she came. The Bible says here that when she knew that Jesus was in the house, when she knew that Jesus was going to be there, Brethren, that's the best time to go when you know that Jesus is going to be there. I hope you came to the house of God this morning knowing that Jesus is going to be here. Come looking for him. Come searching for him. Allowing him to do something in your heart, in your life. I just picture her. She's heard these words. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And then she hears Jesus in, is in the Pharisee's house. Now the house was open. It was sort of a covered patio type thing. And people were allowed to come in and to talk to the people there. And she came, she came up to Jesus. And she had received that word and she had held on to that promise. And she came up to Jesus and she came in behind him. She didn't come up and stand before him. She didn't come and, and sort of brag on. She came and placed herself at the feet behind Jesus. She knew her place. Brethren, our place is not in front of Jesus, leading him on. We're to get behind him and let him lead us on. And we're not to and we're to place ourselves not above him, but at his feet. We need to be at his feet. This morning, she placed herself there, uh, wanting to come to Jesus and say thank you. That was her purpose in being there today. You say, preacher, where do you get that? Well, let's look a little bit farther. Now look at the actions of this woman. It says in verse 38, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping. Weeping. She came to Jesus with a thankful heart. She came with a, to Jesus to say, thank you for all you've done for me. But when she got there in his presence, all she could do was weep. How long has it been since you've been in the presence of the Lord to the place where all you could do was just weep, where the tears flowed and there's nothing you could do about it. You, they just flowed and, and you had to just let them come. The Bible says here she came and stood at his feet weeping, weeping. Brother, she was crying uncontrollably. She was standing there, she was standing behind just weeping. I, I tried to picture that in my mind, standing beh out behind Jesus over his feet and just weeping so hard that the tears from her eyes ran and dripped upon his feet. It says here that came behind his feet weeping and began to wash. She began to wash his feet. That takes a lot of tears, don't it? You can't just one or two tears and try to wash feet. It takes a lot of tears. And so she stood there behind him weeping, and the tears fell upon his feet, and she began to rub them. I think she began to rub them with her hands. Just rub them and sort of wash them. And all of a sudden she realized that wasn't working. So then she had to wipe. The Bible says, uh, uh, began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them. Wipe them. She had washed his feet with her hands, so to speak. But then she just let her hair down. Maybe had that long flowing hair. And she'd let her hair down and she just bent over and take her hair and, and wipe the feet of Jesus to dry them off, to wash them a little better and, and then to dry them off and, and make them look good. Brethren, she wasn't afraid. She didn't look around her to see who was around her before she did all this. She didn't look around and say, well, uh, what was going on? I'll tell you what, I bet there was a commotion amongst the Pharisees. They didn't say it, but the Bible says here they said it in their mind. Brother, you might as well say it if you're going to think it, because Jesus knows. You know, these people that uh, I, I meet every once in a while, they use these words that are substitutes, if you will, for the words they're thinking. 
And I'm saying, well, you might as well just say it because the Lord already hears it. You might as well just let it come on out. But she was washing the feet of Jesus, and then she took her hair and began to wipe his feet. Wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. I find her worshiping. Worshiping. Brother, that's where we need to be this morning. We need to be at the feet of Jesus, worshiping, praising him, giving him glory for who he is and for what he's done in our life. I don't know about you, but I've got a lot to say thank you for. I've got a lot to just look to Jesus and realize if it wasn't for him, where would I be? Where would I be? But she was worshiping. That was an expression of worship. And uh, we find that there. If we look on over in the remaining scriptures, over in verse 45, Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in hath not ceased to kiss my feet. He didn't, the Pharisee here, if this was, uh, if this was Simon, I don't know that it was, but he should have uh, welcomed Jesus in, glad to see him and welcomed him with that kiss. Now, that kiss was a kiss on the cheek, just to say, you're welcome to come on in to my house. But he didn't even do that. He didn't even give, her a, uh, give Jesus that kiss of welcome. But here was a woman who was grateful for what God had done for her. And she just stood and wept and wiped his feet and then she began to worship him and just give him glory and give him praise. And uh, it says she kissed his feet. Can you imagine that? Just standing and all of a sudden just start kissing the feet of Jesus. Man, that, that'll do something for you if you could see that. Just kissing the feet of Jesus over and over and over. It didn't say she kissed him one time. I believe she just continued, continually kissed the feet of Jesus. She was humbled in her heart and she was realized where she was. And then it says that she anointed them with the ointment. Now that ointment, from what I could gather, was a little box here around her neck that was filled with ointment. And she took that off and she opened it up or broke it, however you want to say it, and applied it to the feet of Jesus. To me, that was a symbol of giving to Jesus everything she had. She had nothing else of value. She had nothing else worth anything. She had that little box full of its precious ointment. And she turned it and broke it and put it on the feet of Jesus. I can just picture that. It says over in verse 45, Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with, mo with ointment. You didn't. You know, when they came in, they would give them oil on their heads and, and just to let them know. And it, they say that it would be a, enough oil to where they could brush their hair back. That it, it was more than just a drop of oil on your forehead. But they, he said, you didn't give me any, you didn't apply any oil, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. She's given me the best that she has. She's given me the most expensive thing she owns. What have you given unto Jesus? What have you given unto Jesus? Or do you hold on to everything yourself, hold on tight so nothing can happen to us? Rather, we need to give Jesus everything that we have. Give him ourselves. That's the greatest sacrifice you can make if you want to give him something of value. Give him yourself. Give yourself to Jesus Christ. And then say, Lord, I don't want to just give you myself. I'm going to give you everything of God. I'm going to give you my wife of 51 years. I've given her to the Lord a long time ago. Rather than I give God everything I've got. My home, I don't have a home. I gave, you know, when you're pastoring churches, you really don't have a home. 
But thank God he's placed us in a place now where we do have a home. One we can call home. We can call ours. But now, uh, we just need to give it all to him. I heard a preacher say the other day, you have nothing that didn't, first of all, come from God. It came from God. All he's asking you to do is just give a little love back to him. Give it back to him. Don't get so tied to the things of the world that you can't give back to God a little bit of what you have. Or in this situation, give him all that you have. But we, we saw the woman here. She came in and she began to wash his feet and kiss his feet. And uh, then I want you to see the assuring of Jesus because this is important. It's important to see the assuring of Jesus. He said, Wherefore I say unto thee, Hear her, say unto thee, Her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, she, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. Precious words, precious words. We need to hear as I've done heard the brother say from 1 John, if we're faithful and just to confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. And he said unto her, where the Pharisee and everybody in the house could hear, thy sins are forgiven. You know, we should never be ashamed to tell people what God's done for us. He has told me my sins are forgiven. Now, you may have known me. Of course, I don't think anybody here does. Uh, you may have known me back when I, years ago. And you may have been like some people that I know when I got saved. They said, it'll never last. It won't last. They said when me and Penny got married, they'd give us six months. Six months, that's not long. Well, we're a little overdue. And, and so... But, you know, when God saves you, he saves you not for a week, for a month. It's not a trial run to see how long you're going to last. He saves you for himself, for his glory, that you might walk for the rest of your life honoring him, giving him glory, giving him praise. So that he assured her, thy sins are forgiven. Now, look around the room. Look around the room as you picture this. Can you see the Pharisees? They probably making face. What's he talking about? They're talking to themselves in their own mind. What's he saying? Who is this? Says they can, he can forgive sins. And they they got to thinking all these things. And how can you can you just picture it? They was every time she did something here to to Jesus, she, she wiped the tears. She kissed his feet, and they was probably sitting there, oh, man, he don't know who she is, or he wouldn't allow that. And then when he said, thy sins are forgiven, I believe their mouth fell up. Can he do that? He can't do that. Only God can do that. Who is this man? But he assured her that her sins were forgiven. And then he told her there in verse 50, he said unto the woman, thy faith hath saved thee. Now people say, well, it's God's love that saved her. No, we're not saved by love. Love doesn't save us. God so loved the world, but everyone's not saved. So we're not saved by love, but we're saved by grace. The Bible says we're saved by grace through faith. And her faith had uh, activated the grace of God. And he says, thou art forgiven. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Faith is, is as good as what you put your faith in. I put my faith in a chair sitting out in the yard one night, and I leaned back and it went pop. And everybody automatically looked at me, and I said, ah, no big deal. So I sort of sat and kept the, church, kept the chair together until I could get up and leave. But, you know, we put our faith in the wrong things so many times. 
We need to put our faith in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Give him all that we are, all that we have. Uh, by faith, the words of Jesus and believing he could do it saved her. Saved her. It was her faith that ignited the grace of God. I mean, God's grace is always there. But when we look to him and say, Lord, I love you, I trust you, I want to give my heart to you, his grace is, got you, got you. His grace is always amazing. And then the last thing I want to see there is Jesus said, go in peace. If you're here today and you're saved by the grace of God, have you ever had peace like you have now? Have you really accepted the peace that God has to give to you? It's a peace that passeth all understanding. I mean, when things happen, you don't have to get upset. You don't get excited about it. You know, you don't get overwhelmed by what's going on in the world because you've got a peace in your heart knowing that God is able and that God's going to take care of everything. And put this thing in God's hands, and who better to put it in? Put it, put it in God's hands and, and just have assurance in your heart that God is in control. God is in control. So you picture this situation that took place there that day and, and what happened to that woman and how, you know, when she came, she came thankful because of what had happened. But when she left, she was stepping a lot higher than when she came when she left, she had that blessed assurance that she was a child of God. That blessed assurance that her sins has been forgiven. I don't think she went back out there and did the things she used to do. I don't think she went back to the places where she used to go. I don't think her friends were the same friends that she used to have. Now I say that because I had a friend that was real close when I got saved. And he come by my house one day when I was sitting out on the porch with me and Benny. And he come up and he stopped out of the house and he said, come on and go with us. This is where we're going. You need to go with us. And I wouldn't even get up off the porch and recognize him. Because I knew if I got close enough, he was going to grab me, put me in that car, and I'd have went with him. You know, that's the way Satan works. He said, come on, go with me. Don't do it. Don't get close. If you get closer, he's going to grab you. And I, you're a child of God. You're a child of God, but Satan can still get a hold of you if you allow it. If you allow it. Stay away. If, if you've ever accepted the promise that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord and be saved, you have something to be thankful for this morning. If you've never done that, and if you'd like to do that this morning, rather than Jesus is standing with arms wide open, saying, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's extending that invitation to everyone here. And if you're here and you don't know him, he's saying, come unto me. If you're here today, and you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. There's no doubt in your heart or in your mind that you're saved by God's grace. You've given your life to him. When was the last time you knelt before him and said, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me. You know, I've been thinking about that song. I don't know how it goes this morning. I'm not about to sing it because I don't know. How it goes, but it just talks about, I just came to talk to you, Lord. I don't know but a little, but what I did, did remember, hit home. I'm don't, not worried about tomorrow, because tomorrow will take care of itself. It said, tomorrow comes, I might come, there might be a thousand <laughs> tears, and I might come to you. But, Lord, I'm focusing on today. Today is the day. Brethren, if you're here today, how long has it been since you said, thank you, Jesus? This is a homecoming. It's a homecoming. We come home to Jesus. And we need to just say, Lord, here I am. Thank you that I have this opportunity. 
Thank you for being my father, for saving me by your grace. You need to come this morning. If you're not saved, Jesus will save you by his grace. If you'll call upon his name. If you are here this morning, just take a moment. I know we got a meal waiting and nobody's any more hungry than I am. Uh, but uh, uh, let's don't get it in a hurry, so big a hurry that we miss God. Let's let God have his way in our hearts this morning. Would you like to come this morning and just say, thank you, Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we've had. We thank you for the opportunity, Lord, that's been ours. I pray now that you might just speak to the heart and the lives of the individual. Lord, those of you that's here today that don't know you, God, just speak to their heart and invite them to come unto you. Lord, those who are here today and, and know you, Lord, just speak to their heart. And Lord, may they just say, thank you, Jesus, for all you've done. For we ask it in Christ's name. Amen.